But David understood the significance of sacrifice. He understood that if he was going to give God anything, it had to be of a particular quality. He understood that he could not just present any old thing before God. And as we as we come tonight, understand that your, your prayer now replaces the sacrifice or the animal that was, was, was a part of the sacrificial system in the Old Testament. So your prayer and your, your worship before God becomes what would have been in the Old Testament that sacrificial lamb or sacrificial offering. And one of the requirements uh, for the sacrifice is that it had to be without blemish. There was to be no defect in it. And so when you come before God with your prayer and your worship, you should, you should ensure that you are giving God quality. In other words, give him the best part of your day if you're going to pray. If you're going to worship, bring it to a level that is beyond what is the norm. Bring it to a level where you are you are pushing yourself into a different dimension when you worship. Because listen, this is a sacrifice unto the, the king of glory. And so whatever it is that you are bringing to God has to be on that level. Now, if we were bringing something in the natural to a dignitary, surely we would not bring any old thing to that dignitary. We would, we would ensure that whatever we are bringing was of the highest quality. And so God is saying, if you can do that for a man that is, that is temporal, if you can do that for an occasion, for, for human beings that is a temporal um, occasion, God is saying, then why aren't you honoring me with what you are bringing before me? And so our sacrifice has to be of a quality because, because the priesthood demanded a certain quality. There was a standard. And I want to say to us as the body of Christ, it's, it's time for us to raise the standard in terms of what we are bringing before God. And I'm not talking about talent and ability here. I'm talking about sincerity and, and truth in our hearts and, and, and bringing fervor to what we are doing for God. No, the sacrifice must cost us something. It costs us something to get into the glory of God because in the outer court, if we're looking at, at prayer from the perspective of the tabernacle, the tabernacle had three dimensions. The outer court is where you have self-consciousness. This is where you repent of all of your sins and, and you ask God to direct your prayer. The inner court is where we, we come with praise and thanksgiving and where we bring our personal issues to God. But there is another dimension in prayer. And this is the dimension of the most holy place. And, and, and this is where the glory of God resides. And I, I want to say to you tonight that if you are praying, you've got to, you've got to shift out of self-consciousness and, and, and out of the place of repentance and get into the place of prayer and thanksgiving and, and bringing the issues before God. But, but you've got to shift out of that place and get into the dimension of glory because this is where you are able to negotiate with God. Yes, you can negotiate with God. This is what intercession is all about. You are able, you are able to go before God and plead on behalf of another individual. You can see a particular situation happening and a particular diagnosis has been pronounced and you can go into prayer and literally change a situation, but you've got to get into glory. Abraham understood this very well. He, he resided in this glory because he was able to negotiate with God concerning Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you remember the, the, the story well, he said to God, well, if there are 10 people in this city, because God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but, but because Abraham understood ah, the glory realm, he was able to get inside there and negotiate with God 
God to see if he could save Sodom and Gomorrah. Ezekiah understood this dimension very well. He understood that he could also negotiate. God sent a prophetic word to Ezekiah and pronounced death over Ezekiah. But Ezekiah, the Bible says, turned his face toward God and began to call out to the living God and convince God to extend his life. Amen. He was able to convince the Lord to extend his life. Now, in order for your sacrifice to get to the level where it is pleasing unto God, number one, you've got to break through the barrier of your flesh. Your flesh doesn't want to pray. Your flesh doesn't want to focus on God. It, 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 the Bible says that the carnal man is enmity um, with the spiritual man. And it is enmity um, with God and let nobody who walks in the flesh think that they are able to please God. And so you've got to break through the barrier. Sometimes you, you, you are to pray and you just want to roll in over in the bed and go back to sleep. But you've got to, you've got to break through the flesh barrier, break through the weariness, break through the sleepiness. Listen, it is a sacrifice and a sacrifice is going to cost you something. A sacrifice is not intended to make you feel comfortable. It is a sacrifice. There is a price to pay. And so you've got to break through the barrier. You've got to break through the frustration and the weariness barrier. Oftentimes when we are praying and we're not getting the immediate results or not getting the results in the time that we think we should get the results, we become frustrated and weary. And the Bible says, be not weary in well-doing. And the Bible says that we should not faint because in due season, the Lord is going to reward us. And, 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 and I'm going to say this tonight, that this barrier is set up to keep imposters out. What do I mean? People who don't really want the answer. People who have not made up their minds that they are going all the way with God. People who have not decided that God is going to be their only answer. So it is set up to see how much you are willing to persevere until you get the breakthrough. It is set up to see how much you are willing to endure until God breaks you through. So you've got to break through the barrier of weariness. The Bible talks about the woman that went to the unjust judge and the Bible says that this man had no regard for God and did not have regard for people, but because this woman was consistently coming uh, to, to the judge, he gave her what she desired and Jesus used this illustration to, to teach the principle of perseverance when it came on to prayer. And I want to say to us tonight that you've got to, you've got to keep pushing until you get the answer. You've got to keep calling until God releases the thing because he is looking to see if you are oh, going yeah. to persevere until you get the breakthrough that you need. Amen. You've got to break through the barrier of double-mindedness. And this is where you have to make a decision that whether or not you believe what God says he was gonna do. This is where you've got to contain with fear and unbelief. You've got to break through the barrier because you cannot be praying one thing and then when you come out of your prayer closet you allow the enemy to sabotage your thought process and you start wondering if god is going to do what he says he's going to do the devil is a liar the bible says and the father of lies everything that comes out of the 
the mouth of the enemy is a lie and it is designed to sabotage your walk with God. So child of God, when you go into prayer, you've got to become steadfast. The Bible says, set your affections. In other words, you've got to make up your mind that God is who he says he is. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to stand upon the word of God. If God says that by his stripes, you are healed and you are going to stand upon that word, regardless of what you see still manifesting in your body, you're going to uh, not only pray, but you're going to declare that word until the enemy backs up. You're going to continue to declare the word because you believe God and he is the final resort. Amen. Now, prayer, and we're talking about barriers now, is not designed for your convenience. God is not going to wait until you are comfortable or until it's convenient to you to pour out his spirit. And if God is calling you into prayer, and we talked about the hours of the, the prayer watches last week, if God is calling you into prayer you you've got to be pushed out of your comfort zone and you've got to challenge yourself and god is demanding in this hour that the church ascend to a higher dimension of prayer you've been praying for half an hour and you're not getting the breakthrough that you desire it is a signal that you've got to push your way into a greater dimension of prayer because the thing that you are praying for is not holy in a lower dimension. I'm going to say that again. The thing that you are believing God for and the thing that you are praying for, some of us are praying for some massive things. How do you expect that massive thing to manifest in your life when your prayer life, when your devotion to God is not lining up with the measure of the thing that you are asking for. You have got to match what you are asking God for with your level of devotion because the thing resides in a dimension of glory that you have not yet tapped into. Amen. And so you've got to get there. You can't be asking for something in a greater dimension and you are in a lesser dimension. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. You cannot be asking God for something big, but your prayer life is below what you're asking for. You can't be asking big and living small. Child of God, it's time for us to ascend. It's time for us to emerge out of the confines of normalcy and out of the confines of, of mediocrity and ascend into glory. The spirit of the living God is calling us to higher ground. The spirit is calling us to come into the place that God has carved out for us from before the foundations of the world. My next point is building an altar unto God. An altar is a, a place of death. So it's going to take effort here. You've got to be willing to die here. Hallelujah. You've got to be willing to die to your own ambitions and die to your own agenda and die to your own um, thought processes as to how God is supposed to answer and what is supposed to happen in your prayer time. You've got to be yielded to the spirit of the living God. And listen, in the Old Testament, the sacrifice was bound on the altar. David said, God is the one who shows us light, buying the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Amen. In other words, once the sacrifice got on that altar, it could not move. And I want to say to you today, once you build that altar unto God, 
God is expecting you to keep your, your prayer appointment. He's expecting you to stay on that altar and to keep that altar going regardless of what is happening. And the, 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 the horns on the altar, there were four horns on that altar, which represents not only the four dimensions and the four winds of heaven, but it also uh, represents the four areas or the four major areas of your life, your finances is your relationship, your walk with God and your physical health. So when you are bound on that altar, everything is sacrificed unto God. Now our God is a consuming fire. The songwriter says that he is fire all by himself. Now, when you look in the book of Leviticus, the Leviticus tells us that the fire that fell on the altar was not a fire that came from any man, that literally the fire fell from heaven onto the altar, onto the sacrifice. Amen. So you have got to be on that altar. And, and another interesting thing I found in Leviticus, um, and this is chapter 16, verse 12, is that the same fire that was placed on the, the altar where the animal was sacrificed is the same fire that was used to burn incense unto God. And the scripture says that incense is, is as, as our prayers going up to God. So in other words, before your prayer gets to the point where it can be set on fire, you have got to sacrifice and you have got to get to that place where you are consumed. So now when you go into prayer, the fire is transferred to your prayer and it becomes a sweet smelling savor unto God. So the same fire that you build based on your sacrifice before God is the same kind of fire that God is going to cause to fall on your prayers and it's going to ascend into the prayers, into the presence of God. And we are, the Bible says, made in the image and in the likeness of God. And if God is fire, then brothers and sisters, we ought to become fire. And this is why God demands that our prayers become fervent. Bible says that the fervent, effective prayer of the righteous avail it much. That the word means the boiling point prayer. The prayer has got to get to a level of intensity where it becomes boiling point prayer. And sometimes God will deliberately put us in situations and put us in circumstances that forces the fire out of our spirits, amen. He will put us in situations and put us in circumstances that demand an answer, hallelujah, by fire. It demands you, listen, you, the Bible says that the, that the sacrifices of God are a broken heart and a contrite spirit and that this he will not despise. And I wanna say to us tonight, that sometimes God allows us to go through the situation to get us broke on enough so that we can get to the level of fervency so that fire can answer fire. Are you with me tonight? Listen, the fire that is coming up out of your spirit has got to, has got to uh, mesh with the fire that is coming up from out of heaven and then you will have an explosion then you will have an ignition then you will have glory ah uh, being released in your household being released over your community being released over your bloodline even for generations unborn to time but for a lot of us we, we need to go back to our altars and begin to repair the altar because for some of us the altar is completely broken down. For some of us, we've, we've, got to, we've got to lay ourselves out on that altar 
and go into repentance until the fire begins to fall. For some of us, we need to go back and fan the flames of our prayer life. It, 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 it might be there smoldering. And when I was in the country and we had the coal stove, you might not see any smoke. You might see how it covered, the stove covered with ashes. But once you go and you begin to, to fan it, you realize that there are still flames there. And, and some of us have to go back and start to fan our prayer lives. Get back, get back there until God comes down in, in, in your bedroom, in your wherever you, you are building that altar. Go back and begin to fan it until God gives you a visitation. Amen. And I'm going to close there tonight. And I'm going to pray. But I want to encourage you tonight to get into that attitude and mindset that you're not going to bring anything before God. You're not going to pray a little casual prayer because you're going to bring quality before God. You're going to treat God the way or even better than you would treat the prime minister if you got an a visitation from the prime minister or your CEO or whoever you hold in high esteem. You are going to give God the best of yourself. Amen. You're going to give him the best of yourself. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you tonight, Lord God, that you require sacrifice. Mighty God, and we understand that we should bring nothing before you that does not cost us anything. And so, God, we are coming tonight, Lord, and we are repenting, Lord Jesus Christ, for living in lukewarmness and, and for presenting lukewarmness before you. We are asking God that you will wash us. We are asking God that you will cleanse us. We are asking God that you will purify us one more time. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, we are asking tonight for an awakening. We are asking God that you will baptize us one more time with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We're asking God that a hunger and a thirst for you, mighty God, will be ignited in our spirits like never before. God, I pray that you will break us out, Lord Jesus, out of our comfort zones, out of our routines and out of religion, mighty God, and bring us into a place where we can encounter you in your freshness. David said, anoint me with fresh oil. We're asking for a fresh outpouring tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, you said they that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. We're asking God that you would fill us tonight. Fill us one more time, God. Break us open tonight. Let deep call unto deep tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, show us down into our dry places, God. In the name of Jesus, you promised to bring streams into our deserts, mighty God. You said when the first is seek water and there is none that you will pour out, Lord Jesus Christ, from heaven, Lord God, through the windows of heaven, we are asking for an outpouring tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Send us a refreshing in your presence. You said we will have seasons of refreshing in your presence, God. Revive us again in the mighty name of Jesus. Push us into another dimension of prayer tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Push us behind the veil, God. Lift us, Lord Jesus Christ, into glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, fill our lives with your glory. Mighty God, let glory be upon our faces. Let glory be upon our lips. Let glory fill our environment, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty.
mighty. Baptize us in your glory tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, take us to deeper places in the realm of the spirit. The places that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and that which has yet to enter into the consciousness of men. Lord God, we are waiting on you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are waiting for your glory to show up, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are waiting for signs and wonders to manifest among us tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah.